Sutra. Ananda, consider, for example, a man who picks up a Kalavinka picture and stops up his two holes. He lifts up the picture filled with emptiness and, walking some thousand li away, presents it to another country. You should know that the scandal of consciousness is the same way. Commentary Form, feeling, thinking, and activity have already been discussed. And now, the scandal of consciousness will be explained. First, I will give a general review of the first four. The scandal of form refers to things which have shape and appearance, which have material substance. When the staring eye looks into emptiness, strange flowers come into being. Although the strange flowers are empty and forms, nonetheless they have form and appearance. Feeling means reception. When the hands are rubbed together, there arises an awareness of coarseness and smoothness and of cold and warmth. The scandal of thinking simply depends on the characteristic of thought. For instance, your ears hear some, someone speak a bombs and you begin to think about them. As soon as you do so, your mouth waters. This is a result of the scandal of thinking. Thinking here refers to false thinking. Activity means a movement. It is ceaseless. People are first young and then they become middle-aged and then old and then they die. Thought after thought arises and is extinguished. Thought after thought without cease. This is the scandal of activity. The scandal of consciousness involves of the making of distinctions. It discriminates, considers, and seeks advantages from circumstances. Thus, Ananda had not developed his skill, had not cultivated samadhi power, but was greedy for erudition. That is to seek advantage from circumstances. The functionings of the one mind which seeks advantages from circumstances are not actual. Now, the scandal of consciousness will be explained. Ananda consider, for example, a man who picks up a Kalavinka picture. Kalavinka is a Sanskrit word which means wonderfully sounding bird. The Kalavinka picture is made from the shape of that bird and who and has two holes. The core of the wonderfully sounding bird is extremely beautiful. It is able to cry out while still in the air. Its sound transcends that on other birds, and so everyone likes to hear it. The man in the Buddha's example stops up his two holes. He plucks up the two holes in the Kalavinka picture. He lifts up the picture filled with emptiness and, walking some thousand li away, presents it to another country. What has he done? He has filled the picture up with emptiness. He takes the emptiness a thousand li away. A Chinese li is about a third of a mile. Maybe he walked, maybe he took a boat. At that time, there weren't any airplanes or cars or trains. Now, we can cover a thousand li in a day and think nothing of it. But at that time, the way to cover a thousand li is to walk, was to walk. What did he do with the emptiness? He made a gift of it to another country. Would you say this is possible? You should know that the scandal of consciousness is the same way. The scandal of consciousness, the mind that makes distinctions, involves the same principle as capturing some emptiness and carrying it a thousand li to give someone. Sutra, thus, Ananda, the space cannot come from one place, nor does it go another, go to another. Commentary. The man made a gift of emptiness, but are the emptiness from one place and the emptiness of another place of two kinds. Basically, there is no distinction between them. Emptiness is all the same. If you capture a bottle of emptiness in one place and take it a thousand li away to another country and pour it out, it unites with the emptiness there. What distinction is there between them? Emptiness neither comes nor goes. So try the reason for this, Ananda, is that if it were to come from another place, then when the stored up emptiness in the picture 
went elsewhere, there would be less emptiness in the place where the picture was originally. Commentary. The reason for this, Ananda. Why do I say that the emptiness does not come from one place nor go to another place? With emptiness, there is no coming or going. If it were to come from another place, then when the stored up emptiness in the picture went elsewhere. In the Kalabinka picture, one stores a picture full of emptiness and then one goes elsewhere. Then the there would be less emptiness in the place where the picture was originally. You took a picture full of emptiness, so the emptiness in that place is less, right? Does it look to you like the emptiness is less? Does a place you took the picture to have more emptiness? So this is a case of having nothing to do and going to look for something to do. Consciousness is also like that. Not having anything to do, it makes distinction in the East, makes distinctions in the West, makes distinctions among various characteristics and among all kinds of situations. It is the same principle as putting some emptiness in a picture and carry it off to another country to give as a gift. Sutra, if it were to enter its region, when the holes were unplugged and the picture was turned over, one would see emptiness come out. Commentary, if there were leaving and entering, if you say the emptiness is taken from one region to another region, then you would be able to see emptiness come out when the picture was unplugged and turned over. If you say you don't see it, then emptiness is non-existent. If you could see it, it wouldn't be emptiness. So, you cannot transport emptiness, you cannot move emptiness from one place to another. Sutra, therefore, you should know that the skanda of consciousness is empty and false, since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence, nor is it spontaneous in nature. Commentary. Therefore, because of this, Ananda, you should know that the scandal of consciousness is empty and false. It, too, is empty and false since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence. It is not because of causes and conditions that consciousness exists, nor is it spontaneous in nature, nor is there consciousness because of spontaneity. Its origin, too, lies in the wonderful nature of true suchness of the first commons treasury. The Six Entrances, Volume 3, Chapter 3, Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, why do I say that the Six Entrances have their origin in the wonderful nature of true suchness, the treasury of the first common? Commentary, the five skandhas of form, feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness have not been explained. All five are a manifestation of the wonderful nature of true suchness of the first Kama's treasury. Now the Buddha again calls out, Moreover, Ananda, why do I say that the six entrances have their origin in the wonderful nature of true suchness, the treasury of the first Kama? Why is it that why is it said that the six entrances, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, are all the nature of the first commas treasury? The six entrances will be distinguished below and it will be explained. Sutra Ananda, although the eyes staring causes fatigue, the eye and the fatigue originate in body. Staring gives rise to the characteristic of fatigue. Commentary, the Buddha called out, Ananda, although the eyes staring causes fatigue. This refers to the earlier discussion of the eye that looks into emptiness until its staring gives rise to the characteristic of fatigue. The eye stares and even truly becomes tired. The eye and the fatigue originate in body. Staring gives rise to the characteristic of fatigue. These two kinds of manifestations are not apart from body, in the true nature of body. 
the characteristic of fatigue is produced. Sutra, so because the sense of thing is stimulated in the midst of the two forms, defining objects of light and dark, defining appearances are taken in. This is called the nature of thing. Apart from the two defining objects of light and dark, this thing is ultimately without a substance. Commentary. Why do I say that within the true nature of body, the staring gives rise to the characteristic of fatigue? Ananda, you should know that because the sense of thing is stimulated in the midst of the two forms, defining objects of light and dark, it becomes involved with the two characteristics of form, light and dark, two forms of defining objects. Light and dark are part of the empty and forms environment which lies before you, with the existence of, em of this empty, false environment, there arises the nature of seeing. The feeling of space are taken in, the thing takes in the forms and appearances of the defiling environment which lies before it. This is called the nature of seeing. It is the nature of the substance of seeing. This nature of seeing does not refer to the understanding, the mind, and Seeing the nature, which is discussed in the trans Kung. Here, the nature of thing refers to the substance of a nature of one's ordinary thing. Understanding the mind and seeing the nature means that one understands one's own mind and sees one's own nature. Seeing the nature refers to, in that case, to seeing one's own inherent Buddha nature. But the thing nature referred to here is just the nature of ordinary thing. Apart from the two defiling objects of light and dark, this thing, when this nature of thing becomes separate from the two defiling objects of light and dark, is ultimately without substance. It hasn't any actual substance. There's nothing which actually exists. Sutra, thus Ananda, you should know that thing does not come from light or dark, nor does it come forth from the sense organ, nor is it produced from emptiness. Commentary Thus, Ananda, you should know that seeing does not come from light or dark. The nature of thing does not come from light, nor is it produced from within darkness. Nor does it come forth from the sense organ, nor is it produced from the eye, nor is it produced from emptiness nor is it produced from within emptiness. Sutra, why? If it came from light, then it would be extinguished when it is dark, and you would not see darkness. If it came from darkness, then it would be extinguished when it is light, and you would not see light. Commentary, why? If it came from light, if the nature of thing came from the defiling object of light, then it would be extinguished when it is dark. The two defining objects of light and dark cannot exist simultaneously. When one comes, the other goes. They cannot stand together. If you want to say that the thing comes from light, then there could not be any darkness, and you would not see darkness. And so the nature of thing would not see dark things. But when the light goes, the thing can see the darkness. So the thing does not come from light, now does it come from darkness? If it came from darkness, then it would be extinguished when it is light. If the nature of thing arose from the defiling object of darkness, there would not be any light. We would not be able to seek the characteristic of light. Sutra. Suppose it came from the sense organ, which is obviously devoid of light and dark. A nature of things such as this would have no self nature. Commentary. If you say the thing is produced from the eye, suppose it came from the sense organ, which is obviously devoid of light and dark. If it came from the eye, it would not be composed of the two kinds of defining appearances of light and dark. According to that explanation, the nature of things such as this, the thing as sense would have no self-nature. If it came from the eye, it would not have its own substantial nature. So it is not brought about from the sense organ. Sutra, suppose it came forth from emptiness. When it looks into 
uh, it looks in front of you, it sees the shapes of the differing dust turning around, it will see your sense organ. Moreover, if it were emptiness, the self which sees, what connection would that have with your entrance? Commentary, suppose it came forth from emptiness. Suppose you say the essence of thing is produced from within emptiness. When it looks in front of you, it sees the shapes and the, of the defiling of dust. Looking in front, it can see the defiling dust. Turning around, it will see your sense organ. When the thing turns back, it will see your eyes. It sees it in front. Why can it see when it turns around? Nothing is obstructing it. Why can't you see your own eyes? However, if it were emptiness itself, which it sees. Moreover, if you say it is produced from emptiness, if emptiness itself sees emptiness, what connection would that have with your entrance? Would it have any connection with your own basic nature? Do you have anything to do with what goes on with emptiness? So, it is not produced from emptiness. Sutra, therefore, you should know that the eye entrance is empty and false since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence nor is spontaneous in nature. Commentary, therefore, because of this, Ananda, you should know that the eye entrance, the first of the six entrances, the eye organ is empty and false, its arisal is empty and false, and its extinction. Of distinction of empty its extinction is empty and false since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence it is not produced from causes and conditions and its extinction is not based on causes and conditions nor is it spontaneous in nature nor does it come about spontaneously its place of origin is within the treasury of the first come one Sutra Ananda consider, for example, a person who suddenly stops up his ears with two fingers because the sense organ of hearing has become fatigued. A sound is heard in his head. Moreover, both the ears and the fatigue originate in body. Monotony will produce the characteristic of fatigue. Commentary Now the ear engines will be discussed. Ananda Consider, for example, a person basically there is no such person who plays around like this. The Buddha just supposes there might be such a person who suddenly stops up his ears with two fingers. He plucks up his ears. Because the sense organ of hearing has become fatigued, a sound is heard in his head. After you have plucked up your ears for a long time, they don't hear the sounds outside. But inside, something goes haywire. The sound comes forth inside. The sounds we hear are sounds outside, but now he stops up his ears, so he can't hear outside, and he hears a sound inside. To pluck up your ears for that long would be like staying in your room for a long time and not going outside to look at things. After a long while, you will feel very depressed, and you want to go out for a walk or run around. In the same way, the ear usually listens to things going on outside. If you do not permit it to listen, but instead stop it up so it cannot hear, it will listen inside. What kind of sound occurs inside the head? Try it out. Stop up your ears for a couple of days and see what sound you hear. Then you will know. So I will discuss now what kind of sound the person in the example heard. However, what the eyes, what the ears and the fatigue originate in body. The characteristic of fatigue and the ear are both the true nature of body within the treasury of the first come one. Monotony will produce the characteristic of fatigue. One ignorant thought produces a falseness and then it turns into the functioning of the ear organ. Sutra, because the sense of hearing is stimulated in the midst of the two forms, defining objects of movement and stillness, defining appearances are taken. This is called the nature of hearing. 
apart from the two defining objects of movement and stillness, this hearing is ultimately without substance. Commentary Because it relies on the two forms, defining objects of movement and stillness, hearing dwells in the midst of them. In the midst of them arises a hearing nature, defining appearances are taken in. The two defining objects of movement and stillness cause the nature of hearing to arise in the ear. The hearing nature is like a magnet which attracts the pieces of metal. These defining appearances are not pure and clean. They are called dust in Chinese. Why is there defilement in people's self-natures? I'll tell you why. It is because the eyes look at things and attract defiling appearances, which makes them unclean. The ears hear sounds and attract the defiling appearances. They attract unclean things. Basically, the self-nature is clear and pure. It has no defilement. But because the eye and ear attract unclean external things, the self-nature within becomes defiled also. The word attract, see, can also mean to inhale as inhaling cigarette smoke. When one inhales cigarette smoke, it passes into lungs and although ordinary people cannot see into their own insides, in the fact remains that one's throat, windpipe and lungs become coated with tar. Haven't you seen the black tar collected in a chimney? People who smoke have the same kind of deposits of tar in their lungs. But since you haven't had an operation to disclose this, jaw, intestines, throat, and internal organs can be coated with tar and you still are unaware of it. The finding of space are taken in, in the same kind of principle. Because you take in external defining appearances, your self-nature is coated with a kind of tar, although you cannot see it. It is defined by these things and because it is covered over, it lacks light. Shen Xiao said, The body is a body tree, the mind a bright mirror stand. Time and again brush it clean and let no dust alight. Basically, this verse is a fine expression of principle, but these are not the words of one who has seen his nature. It talks about cultivation, a level prior to seeing the nature. It likens the cultivation of the way to dusting a mirror over and over again to keep it bright. One who cultivates the waste like one who wipes the dust off the mirror. After Great Master Sun Xiu, uh, Shen Xiu spoke this verse, the Sikh Patriarch, the Great Master Kui Neng, replied to be the following verse, Originally, body has no tree, nor any bright mirror stand. Originally, there is not one thing. Where can the dust alight? That is to say, everything is taken care of. In cultivating the way he has already been certified as having obtained the fruition. After one has been certified as having attained the fruition, it is not necessary to do the kind of work the Great Master Shen Xiu's verse speaks of. Most people say that Great Master Hui Neng's verse is well said, but that the Great Master Shen Xiu's is poorly stated. Actually, both verses are good. For those who understand the Buddha Dharma, every Dharma is a Buddha Dharma. When you speak Buddha Dharma to those who do not understand, they do not realize it is Buddha Dharma. So you should conscious, uh, conscientiously investigate this doctrine. If you understand it, you can understand all doctrines. This is called the nature of hearing. When the organ of uh, the ear takes in the defiling object realm apart from the two defiling objects of movement and stillness if the hearing nature is separated from the two defiling objects of movement and stillness this hearing is ultimately without substance it hasn't any nature of its own sutra thus ananda you should know that Hearing does not come from movement and stillness, nor does it come from the sense organ, nor is it produced from emptiness. Commentary first refers to the circumstance spoken of above 
in which the ear and the fatigue are both woody. Monotony gives rise to the characteristic of fatigue. Ananda, you should know that hearing does not come from movement and stillness. It is not from movement and stillness that the hearing nature comes, nor does it come from the sense organ, nor does the hearing nature come from the ear, nor is it produced from emptiness, nor is the nature of hearing produced from within emptiness. Sutra, why, if it came from stillness, it would be extinguished when there is movement, and you would not hear movement. If it came from movement, then it would be extinguished when there is stillness, and you would not be aware of the stillness. Commentary, why, if it came from stillness, this is more or less like the meaning presented above, but you should not be annoyed. The doctrine must be explained in many detail. The Buddha explained the realm of the six organs in great detail. It would be extinguished when there is movement, and you would not hear movement. If the nature of hearing came from stillness, then when there is movement, it would be destroyed. There would not be any hearing nature, but there is a hearing nature when there is stillness, and there is a hearing nature when there is movement. If it came from movement, then it would be extinguished when there is stillness, and you would not be aware of the stillness. If the hearing nature came from within movement, there wouldn't be any stillness. You wouldn't know about the characteristic of stillness. If it came from within stillness, then you wouldn't know there is a characteristic of movement. Therefore, the hearing nature is not produced from the two defining object appearances of movement and stillness. Sutra Suppose it came from the sense organ which is obviously devoid of movement and stillness. A nature of hearing such as this would have no self-nature. Commentary Suppose it came from the sense organ which is obviously devoid of movement and stillness. The two defining objects of movement and stillness would be absent. A nature of hearing such as this spoken above would have no self-nature. Why? If it had a substance, it would have a substantial nature. But you cannot find the substantial nature of the hearing nature. Sutra. Suppose it came from emptiness. Emptiness would then become hearing and would no longer be emptiness. Moreover, if it were emptiness itself, which hears what connection would it have with your engines? Commentary. Suppose it came from emptiness, if it is produced from within emptiness. Emptiness would then become hearing and would no longer be emptiness. Suppose the hearing nature arose from within emptiness. Emptiness is devoid of knowing and awareness. It is senseless and it's and so if emptiness was to have a nature of hearing, it could no longer be called emptiness. Therefore, hearing does not come from emptiness. Moreover, if it were emptiness itself which hears, suppose we say that the hearing nature is produced from emptiness, then what connection would it have with your engines? What would it have to do with you? It wouldn't have any connection with anyone. Sutra. Therefore, you should know that the ear engines is empty and false, since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence, nor is spontaneous in nature. Commentary. Therefore, you should know that the ear engines is empty and false. Because of this, you ought to know that the ear engines the kind of hearing nature is an empty falseness, since it neither depends upon causes and conditions for existence, nor is spontaneous in nature. It does not originate by being produced either from causes and conditions or by spontaneity.